Hello friends, in this video we are going to revisit the Hoover Compact S3458 and check out my progress so far in its rest restoration. Things have not gone quite according to plan. <laughs> Let's check it out. I've got the compact here, so let's have a look at it. Now, it certainly looks a lot better than it did when I first got it um, and took it out of the box and uh, showed it to you. Physically, it's come up quite, quite well. Um, as you would have seen in the previous video, inside the cleaner was absolutely filthy. It was just unbelievably covered in uh, dust and dirt and it had obviously got wet at some point and around like the um, the uh, furniture guard here inside it was kind of like how can I put it it was it was like goop there was this dirty sticky goopy stuff that had attached itself to to the plastics getting that off was an absolute nightmare so what I did was I took drastic action so I'm gonna hand you over now to, to myself in the kitchen and we'll check out what I did. Indeed friends, desperate times do call for desperate measures. So the compact, um, I can show you the um, the broken top panel much easier like this. So you can see there we've got uh, quite a bit of repairing to do on that panel. But this one itself is not too bad. This is uh, by far the cleanest panel in the whole flipping machine. Uh, clanking of uh, alcohol bottles. So I'm going to show you the, um, the the motor cover. So I've taken the panel off here, which has got the the switch on it. Um, that was quite easy to take out. And here there was a foam filter. Now this foam filter had a good inch of filth on it. It was unbelievably thick. And you can see this is just all absolutely filthy as well. I mean, look at the state of it. To 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 clean this with like a, a cloth and some uh, spray <laughs> and the rest of it would take forever absolutely forever and if you look at the uh, we're going to chuck the motor cover in as well uh, but if you look at the actual base of the cleaner it is just shockingly bad this would take so flipping long to clean so we're going to cheat how are we going to cheat well we're going to use the dishwasher. So I'm going to get down here and see if I can get this compact into the dishwasher. I've, I've left the wheels on. Oh, actually, I might go and see if I can just peel this sticker off. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, that probably will survive. No, I think it'll be. It'll be fine. So I think we can get it in to the dishwasher. Okay. So let's put that panel there. Um, we'll put the top section of the machine in the top basket like so that's quite cool actually it, it fits it fits really well and we'll, we'll put that there like so so then we can just slide the compact in like so and then do up the door now, i'm going to show you what i'm going to do here now i have to be brutally honest with you guys this is not something that i would normally do um, because if you use like a really hot wash, so we've got on, on my Bosch here, we've got a normal 65, Eco 50, quick 45 and a pre-rinse. So the first thing we're going to do is put it through a pre-rinse to get rid of the, um, the bulk of the nastiness that's stuck to the plastic. I would absolutely say to you, never put it through on a hot wash. The quick 45 is absolutely perfect for this uh, task because what I found in the past, when I've put machines through the dishwasher this isn't the first time I've done this um, if it's really hot if it's a really hot wash it can actually discolor the plastics even more so you've got to be really careful with that so let's just stick the compact through on a uh, pre-rinse and we'll see the state of it when it comes out and then I'm going to stick it through on a quick 45 so let's start this program off and then uh, we will reconvene when it's done and we'll take a look at it. The dishwasher's finished its cycle so let's open it up and see what the compact is like now just after that uh, rinse. We'll check out the lower body section so let's bring this out. 
and have a look. Let's see what it's achieved. Okay, yeah, not, not a great deal, to be honest, but it's on the road to getting there. Um, if I just show you, I don't know if you can see it actually inside the dishwasher itself, but uh, there's a whole load of nastiness in there now that's actually come off the machine. So definitely gonna have to clean the uh, dishwasher before I use it for its intended purpose. So let's just pop in a dishwasher tablet. Just a, just a normal dishwasher tablet. And pop that in, there we go. Ugh, my fingers are all dirty again. Close up the door, go. And we will set the machine off on a quick wash. Okay, turn that to quick, turn the machine on and press go, 29 minutes, and we'll see what the compact looks like after its first quick wash. Cross your fingers guys, hopefully this will work. I hope you guys are as excited as I am to see what the results of this little experiment are. So let's open up the dishwasher and take a look at the compact. Now, um, I think it may be even more cream than it previously was actually, <laughs> which is unfortunate, um, but yeah, kind of to be expected. So let's have a look and see. Oh, okay, it's not too bad. I mean, God, that's a billion times better than it previously was. Look at that, wow. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think we can work with that. That's good. Um, I'm gonna have to obviously give it a good scrubbing. Just let me get the top section down. Um, and we'll have a look at this. Oh yeah, much better, much, much better. So I need to dry it now, um, put it back together. And um, yeah repair the top section it is a shame that it has gone quite so cream it's unusual actually because it's gone cream on the inside as well so there's not much difference between that color and that color normally you find that uh, the machines stay their original color on the inside but this one hasn't for some reason it's uh, it's weird it's like a uniform kind of cream so maybe I'm Maybe I'm kind of thinking that it's not as badly faded as it actually is. Perhaps the picture in the leaflet slash brochure is not accurate and they were more cream than white. But anyway, I'm going to take this upstairs now. I'm going to dry it off and I'm going to uh, service the motor, which is the next thing. And I'm going to try and figure out a way to repair the body. So I shall see you back in the dining room very shortly. As you can see the result from that task of actually putting the machine through the dishwasher worked really well. It's tra transformed it really. It's still a, a little bit dirty inside but on the whole it's not as it's nowhere near as bad as it was. To cover off a few of the other bits that I did, if you recall, the um, top section was broken here, so there's a massive crack, um, and it, it had actually fractured. I've glued this back up, um, and it's fine. It's great. It works. I mean, you, can, you can still see it. Obviously, you can see it. I don't know if you can see it from, from that angle, but there is definitely a, a big crack there. Also, on this panel on the top, it's cracked down here. I think that happened uh, during transit which is a shame that the hose was sort of on top. And actually, looking at it this way, I can see it's slightly concave um, there. So it's obviously had an impact and it's pushed it down. It's not too bad, you know, I'm not gonna moan too much. It, it didn't cost a lot of money. If I paid like 70, 80 quid for it, I, I would be heartbroken, but I think it was 35 pounds in the end. So it wasn't too bad. As I say, you know, Body-wise, pretty good, pretty good. I'm quite happy with it. There's not a great deal of marks on it or anything like that. It's, uh, it seems to have survived surprisingly well. Now, if you recall, uh, in the, the first video, I mentioned to you that I wasn't entirely sure that this is actually the correct color for it. I think it may have faded over time and um, it was possibly lighter than it is now. It's very cream, but, Strangely, it's a completely uniform cream. Every panel 
is exactly the same colour. Outside, inside, all of it is exactly the same shade of cream. Even in the bag area here, it is exactly the same colour. Now that's unusual if a cleaner has, um, has faded over time. Um, if you t check out the video I did on the uh, Electrolux Elite Electronic, you'll notice that that has a huge area, like a jagged area on it where it's faded and the rest of the cleaner is white. But this compact, as I say, is a completely uniform colour. Interestingly, when I was uh, restoring it, there was a sticker here, just, just at this point here, there was a little sticker. Now that sticker had obviously been on there a long, long time, and I can just about see it in this light. Um, the plastic that was under the sticker is ever so slightly lighter than the colour that the, the machine is now. It's not, you know, it's not a massive amount, it's not like it's white under that sticker. It's just ever so slightly lighter. I took a close-up picture of it, which I'll flash up on the screen now. So hopefully you'll be able to see in that picture where the lighter colour is. Now that's obviously under the flash as well, the, I used the camera flash so you could see it better. Um, and it, it, you, can, you can kind of see it better with a bright light shining on it. I can just, I mean, it's literally, I can just, if I look at it from an angle, I can just see it. So that kind of says to me that um, it has faded because what was covered up hasn't faded quite so badly. But the colour that's here is absolutely not what was shown in that Hoover, Hoover brochure that I showed you in uh, the first episode on the compact. And normally at this point, I would say to you, right, let's take it into the lounge and give it a run, see how it goes. But unfortunately, I'm not going to do that this time. I'm actually gonna sit here and I'm gonna run it for you so you can hear the machine going. I'm just gonna plug it in. Now, it's really odd because when I ran this for you, originally in the, the first video, it didn't sound too bad. I detected that uh, the fans had quite a lot of dust on them. So during the servicing of it, during the, the restoration of the cleaner, I completely stripped the motor down. I took both the, the fans out. I cleaned off the fans. There, was, there wasn't a lot of dust trapped on them, but there was enough to to have an impact of how the cleaner sounded. After doing that, I then did, did the usual. Uh, I put oil in the lower ball race bearing. I put some grease on the top sleeve bearing. And I thought to myself, ah, brilliant, fine. Um, it'll be great, it, it'll sound lovely. Unfortunately, it doesn't sound lovely. If I turn it on, you can hear it, you'll hear it. <laughs> definite roar there and unfortunately that roar is um, the top bearing failing so it's a sleeved bearing so it's got the brass bearing at the top and the shaft of the motor excuse this um, <laughs> the shaft of the motor goes into the bearing and spins so this bearing this top bearing is is actually wearing away but it's really odd because it didn't sound like it when the machine was absolutely filthy and covered in muck. And that, I suppose that may have, may have something to do with it. On the exhaust filter under the panel here, where the filter resides inside, it's a permanent exhaust filter on these. I've taken it out now. It was literally an inch of filth on that, that filter. It was a good inch. So it was completely stuffed up. And I wonder if that may have had something to do with the fact that it wasn't like letting its its actual sound through. So that's a real shame. Um, yeah, the motor is not in great shape. I suppose really you could say the whole machine is not in great shape. However, just going back to the point again, um, I didn't pay a great deal of money for it. And whilst it's not the best example of a 3458, 
it's still a 3458. So to have this in the collection is great. Um, I am happy to have it. Maybe one day a better one will turn up or possibly um, a scrap machine will turn up and I can make a good one out of, out of the two. So it's not going to be one to use, sadly. I really don't want to uh, film the machine in use, which is sad because I normally do that because it's nice to, to see to see them working. But the more that motor is used, the more that bearing will wear. And ultimately, what we've got here is a working armature. So, you know, if I, if I use it and that bearing gets worse, uh, you get a lot of sparking at the comm, uh, sparking and arcing, um, it could kill the motor. So, Hence why I'm not going to run it for you. I hope you're not too down about that. Um, it is a shame. I do normally like to show you the machines working properly, but there we go. So it will go into my compact collection. It will go and join its brothers upstairs. I think I have all of them now. That's uh, no, I, no, I don't have all of them. There's one missing. I've got three of the uh, Mark One. Generation two compact. So this is this is this is Mark One Generation two. So I have this one, which is the basic one. Then I have uh, the Super, which is the one with um, the uh, Flex Rewind on it, and uh, then the Electronic, which is the red one. So the one I'm missing, which will be incredibly hard to find, is Compact Total System, which is blue. Um, that was a blue machine. Uh, it was basically the electronic version in blue, but also came with a uh, power hose and a power head. You couldn't vary the power from the handle on it. It was um, very much like the Sensitronic Total System 40, in so much that the power hose ran the power head. Um, you couldn't control the cleaner from the hose. So that's the one that I need to find. And, I, you know, that finding one of those will be impossible. To find one with its original hose, which still works with its Turbo 300 power head, I doubt very much whether I will ever, ever find one of those. However, having said that, this cleaner is maybe not quite so rare as Compact Total, Total System, but it, it, it's on the rarer side of the compacts. People generally didn't buy either the basic model or the luxury model. They tended to buy the mid-range models. So mostly they would have bought the Super and the Electronic. You don't get much more over and above the Super in the Electronic version. All right, you've got Electronic variable power, but how many people in real world use actually use that? How many people need the ability to vary power? In reality, not many. I, I wouldn't have thought. So those were the two most common cleaners, the super and the electronic. The basic cleaner, again, quite rare. Um, the luxury t total system compacts, also rare. I probably would have said this is this is not quite as rare as the compact total system. In fact, I'm, I'm just trying to think if I ever seen one. I, I, I think I probably have done. Um, I rem remember seeing blue electronic compacts. So that would have been the the total system. I probably wouldn't have seen the hose with it or the power head. So yeah, there we go. Nice to have. Glad I glad I got it. It'll go upstairs with its friends and um, yeah, enjoy a retirement until something else comes along and um, yeah, we can make it absolutely perfect. So there we go, that's it for this video. Hope you have enjoyed it. Hope you've enjoyed seeing the uh, compact as well. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to do the usual, commenting, subscribing and liking. Always love to hear from you guys. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care. Bye.